In uh, this video clip, I want to clarify an issue that arose in the diagnostic testing exercise and uh, basically described by the heading here, should I use dummy variables or subsamples? So let me just briefly describe the situation. We had a model where as dependent variable, we had fares, uh, airfares that is, and then we had Let's start like this, alpha plus alpha naught, the constant, plus alpha one times the distance, plus alpha two times the average passenger numbers for a particular route. So I, the index here, is all the different routes, observations of prices, um, market share of the largest airline, and then we had three dummy variables, uh, for four dummy variable for 98, so if a particular observation came from 98, uh, for five if it came from 99, and uh, for six if it came from 2000, and an error term. Whew, that's a long one. So this was our relationship. And then the question uh, in the exercise was, is there anything different about flights that involve New York? And uh, I asked you to uh, to perform an F-test and I gave you all sorts of information. Now, the two strategies, so if you were in the tutorial, you will have seen the exact, uh, the exact question. Uh, so here I just want to outline the following. So we have um, I equals from one to four thousand five hundred and sixty nine. So that's how many observations we have. You can get the data. Uh, you can get the data set, of course, from Blackboard. Now, of these, there were three hundred flights or three hundred observations that involved New York. So either as origin or uh, destination. So what we could do now is we could provide a new dummy variable. Let's call that DNY, but I have to break because Vanya, my daughter, just woke up. I'll come back. Okay, I'm back. So we can uh, generate a dummy variable which takes the value one if uh, New York is either origin or destination and zero if uh, New York is not involved. Okay. So now the question was, is this relationship uh, in equation one, is that the same for flights that uh, involve New York compared to those that do not involve New York. So if you want to do an F-test, you know you need a restricted and an unrestricted model. Now this model up here in one would be the restricted model. Why is that? Because it imposes the same values of the coefficient, all coefficients alpha naught to alpha six, regardless of whether we are talking about an an observation that involves New York or not. So the question is, uh, how do we, uh, remember perhaps I should do that, why do we need restricted or unrestricted? Remember the F-test which we use, I don't go through the entire testing procedure here, um, is calculated as RSS restricted minus RSS unrestricted divided by uh, number of restrictions divided by ISS unrestricted and divided by the decrease of freedom of the unrestricted model. So this is what we need and we need a, a restricted uh, residual sum squares and an unrestricted. So this guy here comes from one. So the question is how do we get the unrestricted version? Okay, how do we get 
these guys so the unrestricted version and there are two strategies so the first option is the following we just split the sample split the sample into 300 observations uh, which involve New York which involve New York and then estimate model 1 and from that you get let's call it residual sum of squares 1 okay and then Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, split the sample into, I should say, perhaps let me do that, into A, 300 observations which involve New York, and we estimate the model for these observations, and what we get is residual sum of squares A. And then B, the second subsample, are the four, oh, I was wrong. It wasn't 300 observations, it was... 296 observations that involve New York flights, okay? So, just correct that, that's important. 296, and here as well, okay? That wasn't 300, that was 296. And the remaining 4,300 observations, that's going to be the second subsample, um, observations uh, not involving New York not involving New York then again we estimate model 1 but only for these observations and from that we get residual sum of squares B and then the RSSU is going to be the sum of these two residual sum of squares. Okay, so we would use that RSSU up here and up here. So that would be the first strategy and that was the one which you could use with the information that was provided because I gave you in uh, in a tutorial question these two these two guys were given now the second strategy that you can use and you can see here we didn't really use dummy variables okay uh, unless of course in MATLAB the question is how do we produce these two subsamples I'll show you, show that to you in a minute uh, and you'll find out that uh, well, we'll still use the dummy variable, variable to select these two subsamples. But the second option is now using dummy variables directly. Okay, here we are not using subsamples or we are not splitting the sample, but we are estimating basically the following, the following model. We are estimating, uh, let's call it one asterisk a model which includes fi equals and now I can't use alpha because this is a different model so we I don't get the same coefficient so I'll say beta naught plus beta 1 times di plus beta 2 times the average passenger numbers plus beta 3 times the market share and so forth okay all the way through to beta 6 times dummy variable 0 0 i but now we need to add basically every variable multiplied with our dummy variable with d and y so so that means uh, the first variable is basically a constant so a constant multiplied with the dummy variable is just a dummy variable so we get gamma naught times d 
and y do it properly I got to it up there the and y i plus and now this the next variable is that di the distance variable so we have gamma 1 times the distance variable times d n y i next is gamma 2 times the average passenger number times d n y i and so forth so each variable gets multiplied with d and y so all the way up to gamma 6 times d 0 0 i times d and y i and now we get an error term let's call that ui okay so the residual sum of squares from here would be so this is now your unrestricted model because you are allowing the relationship to vary for New York flights and the residual sum of squares from here would be directly RSSU and then you could use you could use that up here okay so both of these strategies are exactly the same and I'm going to show this to you now that these are exactly the same. I'll basically, I'll split the sample into two, estimate two regressions and calculate the residual sum of squares. And I'll estimate this full model and get the residual sum of squares. And I'll demonstrate that uh, these two guys, this one and this one are exactly the same. So for that, we're going to quickly, quickly switch to MATLAB. Here's my file. I uploaded... Um, the airfare spreadsheet I estimated the restricted model here you've seen this already from uh, from the previous uh, from the video to for the example so what I now need is my dummy variable for New York and previously I called it cell 2a and cell B um, yeah you can look at my previous video to see how I justified that where I, doing a, a string compare here. Basically, cell 2a, that was my D New York. And I'll, I shall call that D New York now. And cell 2b, that, these were the values that didn't uh, include New York. So let's do the first strategy first. I define a new dependent variable y New York and that is going to be our y variable but only when d and y is equal to 1 and the way how you select that is by just this is remember this is a uh, boolean variable or logical variable it will be 1 if it will involve New York and 0 otherwise perhaps I'll just run up to here to show that D and Y, where is that D and Y has the same dimension as our original variable and it's zero in most observations, but every once in a while there will be a few ones like here, row 77, 78, 79 and 80. That is because these flights involve New York, I think, as a destination in this case. So if I calculate D and Y, I will just do that. Uh, sorry, if I calculate y and y as y equals and then the logical variable d and y, what I get is, as you can see, a new vector with only 296 values for y. And these are the y values that correspond to those observations that involve New York flights. Now I want to do exactly the same with, the, with my x variable. So I'll define a new x variable n and y and that is equal to x and then again we are collecting those rows where d and y is equal to one or true and all columns y only had one column so we didn't need uh, this guy here so and then once i do that i estimate a regression just with y and y 
and x and y and let me just call that uh, a mm, and residual sum of squares a okay so now doing this will give me uh, this residual sum of squares okay the rss a based on 296 observations then i need to estimate the second subsample basically i'll need to do exactly the same but this time only select those flights that do not involve new york that cell 2b logical variable is one if uh, the flights do not involve new york and i'll just call that y new york n for not okay and x new york n for not and then i'll need to supply these two and i'll call the output bb and rs s b and then i want residual sum of squares unrestricted and i call that version one and that will be rs s a plus rs s b okay so now I need the second strategy. Let's let's calculate that first and see what we get. So here uh, stopped. Here we've run everything. So now we have RSSA and RSSB. These are just two values. We'll take care of them later. So now I want the second strategy. I want to include dummy variables. So in X, we have our constant, then we have distance, uh, average passenger numbers, market share, and 10 columns 10, 11, and 12 are the dummy variables. So what I now want is, uh, let's call it X2 for strategy two. I want all these variables again, but now I also want, and let's go back to here, so that, X I just will just include all these variables the constant so there's a one here constant di pi ms and the three dummy variables and now I need extra variables the d new york dummy variable di times d new york pi times d new york i and so forth and the last one should be d naught naught i times d ny i so we can um, so the first new variable should be d n y then we need let's do it from from scratch scratch we know that the distance is going to be in data but in the fifth column so we have this but this now multiplied with d and y i'll use the dot multiplication to indicate that this is element by element multiplication so that is distance times d and y then we need uh, average passenger numbers that was in column six times d and y then market share of the biggest that was the eighth column times d and y then the three dummy variables there were in columns 10 11 oops actually so 10 11 and 12 and i need to close the square bracket so this is now our x2. If x had uh, seven columns, x2 should now have 14 columns. Let us just check this. So we run the code. x2 will now have 14 columns indeed. You can see it here. And let's look at x2 and at x. And uh, we should see. Just look at this. 
here's our x2 and we want to compare that with x so the lower bit is x the upper bit is x2 and you can see that when the first few flights the dummy variable was zero for the first few flights then the extra variables will just be zero as well because we're just multiplying everything with a zero and let's go further down i think we had to go to 77 row 77 yeah here we go in row 77 the dummy variable uh, was 1 and that means we are basically just replicating the first ver the first seven variables again okay these guys will just be replicated again if the dummy variable is 1 so that's what that x2 uh, looks like what we now need to do is we just need to run a new regression the y variable hasn't changed in this case we just extended the x variable so we are regressing y on x2 and we'll get 14 parameters and i'll call the estimated parameters b2 and rss i call that rss unrestricted ver underscore 2 for version 2 okay so we run this and then of course i want to compare RSS underscore version 2 to RSS underscore U version 1 because I, I claimed that the two are the same. So I'll say yeah, compare. Just print this out and then I'll display RSS underscore U version 1 and directly underneath display as su underscore version 2 so let's run this whole guy and you can see here down here are our two different versions of the unrestricted rss and you can see they're exactly the same or well, you can see it uses the e plus to the 7 uh, so you could say well perhaps in these uh, um, lower uh, decimal points we have some difference well what we can do is we can calculate as s u underscore version 1 minus as s u underscore version 2 and if they are the same we should get zero and indeed we get zero so that's all good so i hope what this demonstrated is the two ways i calculated the residual uh, sum of squares unrestricted are with two different strategies either splitting the sample or including a dummy variable for all explanatory variables okay so you will always get if you do that these two will always be exactly the same um, okay one more thing i want uh, i want to show i want to show you that if we estimate so you see down here let's look at the uh, model one asterisk if we have a flight that doesn't involve new york then all this lower row is basically going to be switched off okay because the new york i will be zero okay so then we are only looking at the upper row now i told you that these two strategies are equivalent that means these beta naughts the estimates for these beta sorry the estimates for these betas beta naught to beta six from this unrestricted model from estimating one asterisk should really be the same as the coefficients estimated from our strategy 1a from estimating the subsample uh, or estimating the model on only new york data uh, sorry uh, that is not right so we are saying this involves flights that do not either start in new york or end in new york that means it should be the same as these beta coefficients should be the same as the coefficients we get from here from estimating the b sub sample so we can uh, we can look at this we can um, I'll just delete all this because i saved everything we have uh, bb 
These were the coefficients from the second subsample involving flights that do not involve New York and I have B2. These are the coefficients that uh, for the unrestricted model one asterisk. And now we should see that the first seven elements here are exactly the same. Okay, 43.6496 and 43.6496. So you get exactly the same information. Now what about uh, what about flights involving New York? So if flights involve New York, then you can see what we have down here in this second line is gamma naught times one plus gamma one times di. Okay, because that is one. That one is going to be one plus gamma two times pi. Again, that one is one. So what is now the effect of di if we are dealing with a New York flight? Well, we have beta one times di, di and gamma one times di. So really the effect of distance for New York flights is going to be our estimate for beta one plus the estimate for gamma one. So this guy should be the same as the coefficient coming from this strategy, estimating the model only on New York data. So how can we uh, check that? We're basically saying gamma one, uh, sorry, beta one hat, that was this guy here, B2, that was our one asterisk model. And uh, this guy here, 0 0.0038. So basically, it, if we sum the beta and the gamma coefficients, we need, let me call, uh, let me define a new variable, test, and that is going to be B2 rows 1 to 7 plus B2 rows 8 to the end. Okay, so this is going to be what I just calculated is beta naught hat plus gamma naught hat, beta one hat plus gamma one hat, and so forth. All these the sums of these terms, and these should now be the same as the coefficients we get from this first subsample estimation only. So uh, let me delete all this. Now we want to look at test. That's what we just created, and B A. Okay, and if you compare these coefficients, they will be exactly the same. So what I wanted you to, what I wanted to convince you, and it took me much longer than I uh, thought I would do that, almost half an hour, is that if you want to estimate an unrestricted model allowing for uh, different coefficients for all explanatory variables for a different subsample, then you have two ways you can do that: either by splitting the sample or by including a full set of dummy variables. So I hope uh, that was more or less clear.